everybody. A quick video, I hope. I hope I'm not going to be too long-winded. Here are my two Rincolelio Catlias Sunya Green. Yes, I have two. One reason is because I just happen to love chartreuse, lemon, like greeny blooms on orchids. And another reason is I wanted to compare whether a regular Sunya Green has any kind of different blooms as opposed to this one here, which is a named cultivar called Mailman. However, I have never managed to make that comparison because none of the two have bloomed. I got them both back in 2018. I'm going to forgive regular Sunya Green for not blooming this year. I am very, very happy to say that after a massive division and a massive root cleanup in 2020, at least, at least after sulking for a while, it is now bringing out a stonking new growth. That looks amazing. I'm not holding my breath that it's going to bloom though as we are heading into winter, but any kind of bulk or added growth on an orchid for me equates to more roots. And that is what I also enjoy so much in an orchid. The more growth it builds up, the more roots it creates. I'm hoping that that would equate then into the energy to get the orchid to bloom. So that's my regular Sunya Green. Here is my monster, Sunya Green Mailman. Look at the size of it. Okay. Never mind what Siliano did to the leaves in the back here. That was my mistake. It would help if I showed you. There. I thought the orchid was far enough away. Who knew that Galar cockatoos could stretch their necks so far? Anyway, but look at the size of her. So she also arrived in 2018 with these back structures. I lost a leaf right off the bat when she arrived. I had three nice growths, even though one leaf is a bit wonky. It hadn't been introduced into my light training yet, but it also had a new growth coming, which was this one right here. And then that matured and I get it. They don't normally bloom after they've just acclimated to your environment. But then I got a beautiful growth the following year. This was in 2019. Another amazing growth here, 2020, and this growth, 2021. The growths from 2019 to this year all tried to bloom. This one had buds. When I saw the buds, I moved it into my blooming alley because both of them live on the east side of my patio where they are protected by a white curtain from the harsh sun to avoid any burning on the leaves, but they get a lot of light, seven to eight hours a day. So it tried to bloom. I saw buds. I'm like, right, you're coming to my blooming alley because I didn't want them to blast. I wanted them to make it and then bloom out in their location where I could enjoy them. They blasted. Okay, lesson learned. 2020, this growth in the back here made it beautifully and it started to produce little buds as well. And they blasted even beyond coming out as forming proper buds themselves. I didn't move the orchid this time. It stayed where it was, let it bloom out where it is located, don't let the buds blast. They blasted anyway, even while they were a much smaller structure. Roll on, 2021. There is something in here, but that's already frazzled up and dried. Again, no blooms. I pull the sheaths back because this time of year, I don't want them to get wet. They have still got enough membrane around them that they're still kind of wet. So I pull them back to make sure that nothing happens at the apex of the leaf here in case the humidity gets too high with cooler temperatures. But again, no blooms. And this orchid looks to me like it's big enough to have enough energy to bloom out. Because I'm thinking, what is going on? I have distant parent high percentage of Cattleya dawiana. Now, Cattleya dawiana in my collection hasn't bloomed yet, but she's not ready to bloom because when I bought her in 2019, she was three years away from blooming. And this year's growth is amazing, looking awesome. Love the progression of the growths. And it's now pushing out another growth and maybe a second one if we're lucky. I'm anticipating blooms from my dawiana in 2022. I hope I'm correct in that prediction. Rincolelia, Digbiana, no issues. They live in the same location as my Sunya Green on the east side behind the curtain on the same shelf. Highlight orchid, similar kind of conditions. I've always bloomed this orchid, absolutely no problems. 
Unfortunately for now, I can only boast one beautiful, beautiful new growth. I was hoping that the second lead would also produce a new growth. It had a massive cleanup in spring of this year, 2021. So maybe that is the reason why it's just going to give me one new growth. Never had an issue with blooming Rincolalia digbiana. Another distant parent is my Lelia tenebrosa minus the variety Aurea. But yeah, growing on as they should, as species do. I got a beautiful sheath last year. She's practicing. I wasn't expecting any blooms because I don't have enough structures in the back. Thin structures, not as much energy, but she's trying again this year. Gorgeous growth, sheath. Whether she will bloom or not is something that we will find out sometime in the future. So these are the distant parents. Same growing condition and not really an issue with blooming. As far as I'm concerned, Rincolalia digbiana is one of the hardest ones to bloom. So if that is a parent, I'm getting a regular bloom out of Rincolalia digbiana. What am I doing wrong with my Sunya greens? Let me tell you my temperatures, a little bit of a care thing here so that if you have an answer, you can analyze it better with what I'm saying. They come indoors when the night temperatures drop below 15 degrees Celsius. That is because I contemplate three degrees differential from what is in the ambient air as opposed to what is in the pot because I grow with LECA and self-watering, as you can see. The evaporative cooling cools down the roots. I make sure that I don't cool them down too much. So 15 degrees Celsius is my cutoff temperature at night and then they go indoors where they live on the top shelf of my dining room rack, so to speak, where they get blurple lights. But the minute my temperatures in April are a steady 15 degrees Celsius at night, they go straight to the east side. And during the winter, if it is a gorgeous sunny day and the temperatures are around 17, 18 degrees in the sun, those temps are hotter. So my rack goes over to the west side of my patio and that is where they will live on the top shelf for at least six to seven hours a day, enjoying the direct sun that I have here in my winter. Even though the temperatures are cooler, the light is still intense, and I supplement with blurple lights for the rest of the day, or on very, very cloudy days, that is when they would stay indoors. That goes for all the ones that you see here. Enter April, 15 degrees minimum, steady throughout the nights and all of these candidates go back on the east side and they are again behind a white curtain where they get unlimited light so to speak just protected from the direct sun to avoid burning my summer temperatures can go up to 40 degrees celsius i deal with very very hot dry winds that is why my setup with leka and self-watering is something that helps me a lot to be able to hold on to orchids of this size because they are extremely demanding when it comes to watering when they are in their active growth phase. So I'm telling you all of this because I want to show you the distant parents. I do not have the Cattleya granulosa. Their immediate parents are Ports of Paradise and Meadow Morn. I don't have those. But if we consider the makeup behind the immediate parents, then you can see that I'm okay with growing what their genetic makeup has. And that is why I'm stumped. Did I get mealybugs on one of them last year? It's possible, if I remember correctly, that the mailman here had a little bit of a mealybug issue in the growth and I thought I got to it without any headaches. But I don't want to put everything, oh, I had a pest issue and that's why the buds didn't make it. I want to be accountable and say, why am I not getting the mailman to bloom? I understand why the regular one, the not named cultivar one, does not bloom. I get that part because every orchid that's been through a massive heavy division has to have time to recover and find its feet again, so to speak. But if you have a Sunya green and you have successfully bloomed it, I would like to know what it is that you feel from what I've told you today that I'm not doing correctly. Maybe I should add that my fertilizer is the MSU. When I talk about 300 parts per million, I consider that there is calcium magnesium in my fertilizer and I'm not supplementing as heavily. They do get a CalMag supplement, especially leading up towards the winter. So right now the mailman is not getting any fertilizer whatsoever because the buds have blasted. Up until that point, I was fertilizing at 300 parts per million. But now I've stopped because, well, 
it's growing roots. I am supplementing now with more cow mag and seaweed than I am actually regular fertilizer. I'm piping down on my fertilizer, bringing it down to 160. The temperatures are cooling off a little bit, but especially with this orchid, there is no need to push with 300 parts per million. I'm more interested now that the roots develop, so seaweed and cow mag are going in. This one here, my regular Sunya green, with its gorgeous, gorgeous growth, is now getting 300 parts per million, even though we're heading into winter. And again, that is MSU fertilizer. Just want to make sure that if this is a calcium issue, that I make that information quite obvious so that if the comments come in, you need more calcium, then I would like to know 300 parts per million or should I supplement more on the CalMag front? Because my CalMag goes in at 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium mixed together with 40 parts per million of seaweed, a total of 100 parts per million, but only 60 of CalMag. So if it is about calcium and why my buds are blasting, you have the numbers now, and I would really appreciate your opinion. I'm sorry if this video was a little bit chitty chatty, but I wanted to put it out there. I have gotten huge bloomed orchids to bloom successfully, doing exactly what I'm doing with these candidates here of the Sunya Green. I've gotten my Cattleya Dinard Blue Heaven to bloom. I've gotten my Tunya Good Life to bloom, my Happy Holiday, is about to bloom. I've gotten golden cellar to bloom. So if it's about massive cattleyas and not me giving them enough fertilizer, then maybe these guys just need a tad different care as opposed to what I have achieved to bloom when it comes to the energy of an orchid being able to push out big, huge blooms. So I'm putting it out there. I hope that you found this video interested. I'm looking forward to the comments. I'm looking forward to seeing if there's a little bit of a nugget that I can tweak and adjust. Maybe get away with her blooming first and then doing that, applying that to my mailman over there for 2022. I would really, really appreciate that. And thank you so very, very much for your time looking at green leaves and listening to me going, why is this orchid not blooming? This one. We'll see about this one. I forgive this one, but this one, come on. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.